how to create different types of fire in Blender and when to use what option. I will show you a basic fire setup to set a object on fire. And I'll also show you how to use 2D fire videos for mid to far range shots to make it look more alive and cinematic and not burn your whole PC to the ground. So let's get started. Fire simulations in Blender are pretty straightforward most of the time. I will add in the Suzanne and add some subdivision just to make it a little bit smoother. Uh, move it up right here. To start the fire simulation, we have to press F3 and type in quick smoke. We can change the quick smoke effect to fire later. Um, there we have the bounding box and the object inside the bounding box. And let's scale the bounding box a little bit more up. So all the fire that will get generated stays inside this box. If the fire would go outside of this box, it will not be calculated and you can see it. Right now, if we would press play, you can only see smoke rising up and we want to change that to fire. So we select our object and go into the fluid settings and on the flow type, we change it to fire. All right, now if we go back to the first frame and press play, we can see fire gets generated, whoopie doo. I will scale up the domain even more so we have a bigger fire, something like that. And to have more and higher flames, we can also select the object and increase the fuel. I will set the fuel to two right here. And if we press play again, we can already see, wow, bigger flames, which is perfect. On the flow source, we will change the surface emission to something like 0.1. Uh, that will start the fire closer to the object. If we have the surface emission to 1, you can see it starts further outside of, from the object. Let's change it back to 0.1 and it gets closer. To have even more variation, we can add in a texture so it doesn't get generated fire all over the object, but just on, on a few spots like it would actually in real life on a fire log or something. And for the texture, we go into the texture settings, add in a new one, change it to clouds. Let's put the size to 0.1 and under colors, we can increase the contrast to two. So it looks something like this. And in the physics section, now the texture should already be in here. If you press play now, you can see something is happening. We have smaller flames because fire doesn't get generated all over the object, but just on a few spots. Uh, to change that, we could also increase the surface emission a little bit. So let's put it to 0.5 for now. As you can see, we have more fire and more flames already, and we can increase the fuel again. Let's put it to three for now. And we have more fire. I think three is too much. We can change the height of the fire later. So in the domain section, we have a lot, a lot of settings. And for now, I will scroll down to fire. And on the fire temperature, we can increase how fast the flame rises. So if I set this to, let's say five and press play, you can see the flames get already higher, which is good. I think I will put it even to Let's say seven and check it out again. Always let it load a little bit. For me, this is fine. For me, this looks good. This is perfectly valid. To have more variations in the flame, activate noise. Make sure it works by just playing, press play. And as we can see, we already have way more details in it. Or not, or not details, but more variation in the, in the flame. Uh, if you want to activate the dissolve setting, this just means that the fire or the smoke evaporates at some point. Um, let's put the dissolve maybe to 20 so that the smoke that gets generated will dissolve at a certain point and doesn't need too much calculation. We also don't want too much smoke. I feel like in most fire simulations there is enough smoke already. So I will put the dissolve to maybe 10 and see how it looks. Yes, we have a little bit of smoke, but it stops at a certain level. I will put it to 15. Uh, the higher the number is, the longer the smoke has to dissolve. Um, but for me, for, for me right now, 15 is great. 
Now, as always, in most simulations, just play around with the different settings. As always, you can hover over the different settings and read what this setting does and just up it a little bit or lower it to see what changes. For me right now, these basic settings are all fine. But the only thing I want to change is the resolution. The resolution is how detailed the fire is and it will, it will look less pixelated if the number is higher. For me right now, 128 is good. This looks like a solid fire simulation. If you want to have a super detailed one, go all the way up to 256. But keep in mind, this will take a lot, a lot of time to calculate. So let's stay for 128 for now. Now, the cool thing about this is uh, the fire will react to movement of the object. So to add movement, let's put the monkey over here for now. Let's press I on the keyboard. Let's go to frame 70, move it down, press I. Let's go to 117 and let's move it up and press I again. So we have a pretty basic movement like this. Now the fire simulation will consider the speed and the movement of the monkey and will also move the flames accordingly. If you're happy with all the settings, you can press the domain and under cache type in how long the simulation should last. For me, it should just be 120 frames. If you're happy with all the settings, go to type to all and press bake all. First, save the file. So if it crashes, you don't lose all the progress and then hit bake. After the simulation is done, you can scroll through the timeline and see what happens. And as we can see, the fire moves accordingly to the movement of the ape. So if the monkey moves up, the fire also considers this movement and the speed and reacts accordingly. Now to add some texture to the fire, we go into the shadings tab and in here, make sure you are in the rendered viewport over here. I use the cycles render because this is more realistic. Over here in the domain setting, don't worry, you don't see the fire right now. We have to actually import the fire and that we do with the attribute node. So we type in attribute and in the attribute we type in flame because we want the flame information of the simulation. The attribute we plug into the emission strings and we can see we have a white flame over here. That's not enough, we need a color ramp and put it down here. Let's connect it to the color ramp and this one to the emission color. Here we can set the color for the flame. So I will choose a some kind of orangish reddish color for the flame. And the lower part should also be a whitish, whitish orangish color. And there you can play around with different settings. I usually put a more darker color at the end, something like this. To remove all the wireframe stuff, we can just press this button over here so we can only see what is going on with the fire. We can add in a math note and plug it in at the top here and change it to multiply. And if we type in a value of, let's say 10, the fire is way brighter and we can see it better. I will leave it at five for now. And we can also change some values with a color ramp node before the multiply. Now, if we lower the black, you can see the flames get smaller. And if we move the white bar to the left side, the flames get brighter. For now, I just plugged in this basic setup HDRI here and lower the world opacity so we can see what the smoke is doing. And the smoke density we can change in here. We can put this maybe to 10 so the smoke gets a little denser and we can also lower the the color of the smoke so it gets a little darker something like this is fine and now if you look at it without the hdri it looks something like this and i would recommend using a coal texture or a fire burning texture for the hat i will remove the displacement for now and it looks already way more realistic so this is how you set up a basic fire simulation in Blender. And you should use this if you want a close up of a burning character or a burning object. And the object maybe has some movements that the fire needs to react accordingly. 
but let's say you have a scene like this. The car is burning on the ground, it has no movement, the fire should just go up and it should look cool. You should have different sources of fire inside the car, outside, and it should light the scene up. In that case, I wouldn't recommend using a fire simulation in Blender because this takes a lot of time, a lot of rendering power, the scenes take much, much longer to render. In a case like this, I would recommend just simple 2D flame videos because you don't recognize this if you look from the right angle that it's 2D fire and it looks more realistic and it uses way less computing power to render the scene. So how do you use a flame video? Usually I go to production crate, type in fire uh, because they have the most realistic fire videos out there. I have a subscription, but they have also uh, free fire videos. So just type it in and look for what you got. Download a .mp4 file with a black background. This is the easiest to convert. In Blender itself, we go to Edit Preferences and I think you need the extra mesh object extension. So just type that in and download it. Then we can press Shift A and under Images, choose the Mesh Plane. In here then we can use a fire video and just double press on it. Right now, if you look at the fire video, it just looks like this. The black background is still there. So how to remove that? We go into the Shaded Editor. And in here, we have to delete the principal BSDF. We have to add in a transparent BSDF, an emission node, and a mix shader node, this one right here. We have to plug the transparent and the emission in here. The color we plug into the emission and also into the factor of the mix shader something like that and then we plug the mix shader into the surface and as you can see the black background is gone and the fire is here to increase the emission strength we can just increase the value right here so let's put this to five and as you can see it already starts glowing and spreading more light after that we can use this image and place it wherever you want a simple tip, if you duplicate the video with Shift D and move it over here to not have the exact same movement of the flames, we can copy the texture, the material, so it, it is a separate material in here, and then offset the video. It starts at the later point and now if we scroll through the timeline, we can see the flames move at a different style and a different pace. And also in this scene, maybe you have noticed I have a smoke simulation integrated in here. So it's a combination of 2D fire and a 3D smoke simulation. If you want to know how to create smoke simulations, check out this video of mine. There I explain everything about smoke simulations. So that was it for this fire tutorial. I hope you could learn something and I hope you can use the fire accordingly to your scene and to your liking. If you still have some questions or some errors, write them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Peace out.